This show is sponsored by Visit Tulsa and Tulsa Film, Music, Arts, and Culture. Have you ever been on a road trip so good that you just have to go back? Well, here on Road Trippin', we have been on plenty of those. But we do think there's a really special connection between Austin and the booming city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. But since we've already shown you how easy it is to kind of hit the road and explore this creative hub, this time we're taking to the air. Because with new direct flights between ATX and T-Town, getting there is easier than ever. So we're trading our four wheels for wheels up. We have a plane to catch. These daily non-stop flights between ABIA and our soul sister city of Tulsa can have you in the 918 in under two hours. That's faster than you can watch an in-flight movie. And with so many added things to see and do since we last visited Tulsa, these new flights will help us make the most of our trip. It's time to board. And just like that, actually in about an hour, we're here. Hello, Tulsa. Oh, and check out this warm welcome. Well, folks, we're Desi and Cody. We want to welcome you to Tulsa. That's Desi and Cody, and they're a member of the Tunes at TUL program, and they're giving visitors a taste of Tulsa music the minute they step off the plane. And that's just one of the many ways we'll show you later that Tulsa provides opportunities to keep local artists working. Now for our itinerary. This isn't your typical sightseeing trip. In this very special episode of Road Trip in Tulsa, we wanted to really dive into the creative community here. Few things drive tourism in a town better than a thriving arts and culture scene. So that's why we're here and you are in for a treat. Coming up on Road Trip and Return to Tulsa. Music history comes to life in this sacred space. I love this place. We'll take you inside the church studio to see how this local landmark is leading a recording renaissance. Plus, long live live music. From popular venues to supporting local artists, how this city is making sure musicians can continue to play Tulsa music. Plus, after you get your kicks on Route 66, kick back and stay the night. We're taking you inside some of the coolest, most unique places to stay in Tulsa. And we hope you're hungry. Oh my gosh, it's good. I need some privacy. Thank you. We're taking a trip to the Mother Road Market, a Route 66 food hall that is more than meets the eye. How this kickstart kitchen helps local culinary dreams come true. And you won't find a collection like this anywhere in the world. We're taking you inside the Bob Dylan Center, where they've created an immersive experience that celebrates this legendary musician. Stick around, Road Trip and Return to Tulsa starts after this quick break. Located in the heart of the Arts District in downtown Tulsa, you'll find the Bob Dylan Center. It's 29,000 square feet, over 100,000 artifacts, but just as impressive is the creative spirit that's housed here. Bob Dylan is a man that's well known for his music, but here, visitors will learn so much more. 
Well, I'm here with Steve Jenkins, who has the fortune of being the director of the Bob Dylan Center, which I imagine is quite a job in and of itself. Thanks for having us out here. It's it's my pleasure, and, and yes, it's, it's a dream job and really a thrill to be here and be part of this project. Well, I know if friends saw our first road trip and episode in Tulsa, they saw that we highlighted the beautiful Woody Guthrie Center, which is actually right next door. And at that time, this was kind of in planning and being constructed, and now here it is in all its real beautiful glory. How did the Bob Dylan Center and all of its archives and this history arrive in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Sure thing, because it's not an obvious spot if you think about Bob Dylan being from Hibbing, Minnesota, mm -hmm. but Dylan himself said he really appreciates the hum of the heartland. Mm -hmm. And as he started meeting folks here when discussions began with the George Kaiser Family Foundation, when word got out that Bob Dylan, famously private Dylan, had in fact been saving a trove of materials for 60 plus years, conversation started to see if we might in fact uh, gather those archives here. And that's what eventually happened in 2016. Uh, this is a collection of over 100,000 artifacts. Wow, 100,000. Yes, both, both physical and digital. Lots of music tracks, of course, not surprisingly, things no one's ever heard before. Photographs, home movies, films, handwritten lyrics, journals. We're able to look behind and really see the creative process at work. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a corollary with Woody Guthrie because uh, Dylan has spoken uh, at great length about his love for Woody Guthrie. And so it does seem fitting uh, that these two centers are now under one umbrella and on the same block. You know, and I imagine uh, a man, an artist like Bob Dylan, there is no shortage of fans out there, but that includes those people who are in the industry and in contemporaries and people right now who are creating alongside Bob Dylan. And the Bob Dylan Center looked to them to kind of help curate some of the experiences here. Very much so. We're really fortunate to be working with luminaries in their fields, be it music, such as Elvis Costello, uh, who has curated the jukebox for us here in the gallery. We have Joy Harjo, who we're just honored to be working with. Joy just wrapped up her third term as U.S. Poet Laureate, and Joy will be working with us uh, as our first artist in residence over the coming years to do a number of public programs with us, and we will continue to reach out to other artists. So I think we'll have a very rich conversation going on, artistically and otherwise. What was it that you were hoping to kind of let people know about Bob Dylan in, in a career, in a man that is, is so expansive? I think the constantly changing nature of his artistry, not only in music, but also in visual arts. You know, this is somewhat of a lesser known aspect, but he's a very a prodigious painter. He's also a metal worker. We have a beautiful gate. 16 foot tall that Dylan created specifically for the Dylan Center in our entryway. The music might be front and center, but we did want to shed light on these other aspects of his creativity, showing Dylan's artistry in full flower. And I do hope that folks, whether they have a somewhat of a passing acquaintance with Dylan, right. the guy who wrote Blowing in the Wind, say, or, or for the diehard Dylanologists, as we refer to them, we have surprises in store here. There is one exhibit I can't wait to learn a little bit more of, and that is really kind of a deep dive into some of his most popular songs, and that's right next door. Let's, uh, let's go over and learn, a more, learn more about it. Absolutely. So we've learned a little bit about the overall mission of the Bob Dylan Center, but one of the things that I am already completely fascinated with is, is how it's kind of broken down into digestible pieces of Bob Dylan's life and experience, and that's really what this room is all about. Very much so. This is the Columbia Records Gallery, which consists of a couple of main components. We've got the closest thing we have to a chronology along the perimeter walls here of this gallery by the essayist and Dylan scholar Sean Lulentz that breaks down Dylan's life into nine distinct eras. And then in the center of the gallery, we go very deep into the writing, the recording, the producing, the performing of six songs, such as Like a Rolling Stone or Tangled Up in Blue. Uh, but then we get perhaps a little more obscure, a song like The Man in Me. And within each of these quadrants, as you can see, we have all of these archival materials. For example, here you have Like a Rolling Stone, one of the hallmarks of Dylan's career and really of pop music and in some sense American culture in general. Here you have Dylan bringing an entirely new vocabulary to what we thought of at that time as the pop song. And Dylan, of course, famously performed this song in the mid-60s, notably at the Newport Folk Festival. Mm. So at this folk festival, he deliberately plugged in the guitar. He wow. was suddenly playing electric. 
he realized this is 1965, culture is changing, society is changing. It is time to turn up the volume. And it's hard to overstate what a shocker this was for audiences at the time. Really just a pivotal moment of 60s American music and culture. So we have, for example, the leather jacket that Dylan wore at that performance. Everyone has their own idea of who Dylan is and what he's meant to all of us as listeners over these 60 plus years. Uh, the idea is to, in a way, ask more questions than provide answers. And that is why he is a legend, in fact, a living legend. This is such a beautiful place and it tells an incredible story about a man many think they know, but probably will leave here knowing so much better. I sure hope so. Excellent. Steve, thanks for having us out Thank here today. You. We appreciate it. Coming up on Road Trippin', music legend Leon Russell called Tulsa home, so it's no wonder they take music so seriously. Coming up after the break, we'll show you how they're fostering the next generation of great artists. You can find great live music all across Tulsa County, including here at Maggie's Music Box, which is known far and wide for booking some of the greatest local musicians. Abby Kern's waiting inside right now to tell us all about the Play Tulsa Music Venue Fund and how they've helped Maggie's and dozens of other venues keep the music alive. Well, Abby, good to see you again, number one. Yes! I love us kind of trading turf. We saw you in Tulsa, then you came to Austin for South By, and here I am once again in wonderful Tulsa. Thanks for having us. We are so beyond thrilled that you are <laughs> back in the 918. Since we've been here, so much has happened, and we wanted to really kind of hone in and focus on that creative community, the creative buzz that's happening here in Tulsa, and that's in part because that's really important to you and to the city, right? Absolutely. So we released a Tulsa music strategy last year, finding out that, of course, the music industry has an impact of $335 million Unreal. on Tulsa's economy. Wow. And we have so much creative talent, and of course, everyone's been through so much during the last couple of years, and how can we help our music ecosystem thrive. Through that came Play Tulsa Music. First off, I have to give big credit where credit is due. Sure. Tulsa County Commissioners, they believed in it. They supported us with American Rescue Plan funding, and we were able to put together these unique programs. We launched Play Tulsa Music, the Venue Fund. What that is, is a $350,000 fund to hire live local musicians, and we will pay 50% of their performance fee. And the idea, of course, is to not just help our venues, right? Get more audience members back into back into all these different sized venues, but also get our musicians more gigs, more paid job opportunities. So thrilled to say that we've helped support 40 venues and helping to offset the cost of more than 1,600 live performances throughout the rest of this year. I mean, that is, I mean, that gives me goosebumps. Think about that. That is 40 small businesses. They're not just venues, which is great enough, and they're playing live music, but those are small businesses, people that's their blood, sweat, and their tears, in addition to over a 1,000 performances, which enrich the community, but then also, even better, they're putting these wonderful musicians to work. And that is truly incredible. So then, through that, the involvement was launching our second portion of our recovery funding, which is the Play Tulsa Music Creative Content Fund. So what we have is musicians and bands applying for funding to then work with and hire a local creative support vendor. Instead of 100K, we actually have given out 150K. Oh, wow. And I mean, I'm just so thrilled. We've helped support 30 different bands throughout Tulsa, uh, 23 different genres represented. But what we're doing is helping them pay for hiring of 26 different local vendors throughout Tulsa. So they're creating, let's see, what are the numbers? 14 music videos, 11 albums, six EPKs, like six photography sessions. You know, I mean, the list goes on and on. And that includes album artwork and, right. you know, so this is really to us just the continuation of helping our musicians and our music economy uh, come together, collaborate, and get back to work. I am always excited to talk to you, Abby. Thank you so much for having us back in Tulsa. It is always a great time. The best time to have you in Tulsa. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. And we welcome everyone from Austin to come to Tulsa and check out our music scene.
Seriously, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Thank you, cheers, Abby. Maggie's Music Box is a community music gem thanks to owners Kevin and Amy Smith and Rick Husky. They are at the heart of this beloved venue, working hard to keep local music in the spotlight. Well, Amy, Kevin, thank you so much for having, well, number one, having me on stage at Maggie's Music Box. I feel honored to be here. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for, Thanks being, for being, here. being here. Maggie's Music Box is very special. May I say that? Do you agree? Thank oh. you, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about it, uh, about this space and, and really what you're proud of here. We're just so proud of the heritage of Oklahoma music that we represent. You know, Maggie's is named after the J.J. Kale song, Magnolia. Oh, yeah. So she's a mermaid and she proclaims the greatness of all the music that's, you know, started in Oklahoma. And I mean, I know live music is something that's already and always has been important to you, but especially in the past couple of years, Abby was telling us about the Play Tulsa Music Venue Fund and how that's something that you really took to heart and used, right? Oh, absolutely. We thought, oh, wow, because, you know, everybody's coming out of COVID, everybody's dealing with being shut down. So this really helped us, you know, along with a lot of other places in Tulsa to really bring back, you know, the music scene that was so vibrant in Tulsa to start with. It's just been so instrumental in keeping the music alive yeah. and being able to really honor the gift that the musicians bring. And as a musician himself, co-owner Rick Husky understands that mission more than most. I've got to know all the local guys and they're so passionate about what they do and they're so talented. I'm a big Leon Russell fan, of course. Leon wanted this community to be interchangeable and that's the way it is. Everybody's cheering everybody on. And mm -hmm. if they can come and record on a record or come and play with you one night that's important to you, they'll just jump on board. We have cultivated a following that trusts us to bring them a level of music that they can count on. And we've also cultivated a family of musicians that trust us to really care for them and not only promote what they do, but help them and support them so that they can continue to do what they're called to do. You know, we just kind of know that it's been bestowed upon us to take care of these guys. You know, this is their livelihood. Right. This is what they do. Amy and Kevin, thank you so much for everything you're doing to help keep music alive in Tulsa and Tulsa County. We appreciate that and thanks for having us. Oh, thank, you. thank you for being here. Excellent, very cool. When you visit, check out these locals approved venues for a night out on the town. Kane's Ballroom is one of Tulsa's more famous venues. It's known as the home of Bob Wills. From blues to R&B, music lovers come to the shrine to pay homage to local talent. The Mercury Lounge is a Tulsa standard. Live music, cold beer, and a friendly crowd. Steeped in history, the Tulsa Theater welcomes acts from around the world. The beautiful BOK Center plays host to the biggest names in entertainment. From open mic night to established local bands, Tulsa artists and their fans are right at home at the Colony and head down the stairs to liven up your night with great music at the Lowdown. Coming up on Road Trippin', we're taking you to church, the church studio where music legends have laid down tracks to learn how they brought this historic space back to life. Stick around. For Tulsans, this building is a local landmark. It's the church studio, made famous by Leon Russell, made new by native Tulsan Teresa Knox. She has lovingly and painstakingly restored this special space to record music history for generations to come. I'm at a loss for words to describe what is Church Studio here in Tulsa. Number one, thank you for inviting us in here. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad you are here. <laughs> I am often overwhelmed. I'm kind of an emotional guy. You know, I love things a lot. I love this place. Friends at home, Ida couldn't do it justice. Teresa, kind of explain the history of Church Studio to Tulsa and this community, and then we'll talk a little bit about how you've really brought it back to life. Well, the Church Studio, of course, started out as a church in 1915. It was Grace Methodist Episcopal Church, but really its claim to fame is what happened in 1972, and that's when Tulsa's own, the great Leon Russell, bought this old dilapidated church, and he turned it into a world-class recording studio and home office to shelter records. And uh, it was a really magical time in Tulsa's history uh, when Leon had it. This is where Tom Petty got his start. But so many people came to Tulsa, and Leon was really at the epicenter of that. He was kind of the musician's musician. A few of the names, name drop a little for us. <laughs> Who recorded here with Leon Russell during that time? So I've had an opportunity to interview nearly 300 people 
that uh, were here during this time period, either as an employee or a musician. So things that I learned, even being from here, I did not know before, like Stevie Wonder, Tom Petty, um, Kansas, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, The Wailers, Phoebe Snow, of course, J.J. Kill, Willie Nelson was here for a long time recording, uh, Jimmy Buffett, really the list goes on and on. Wow, that's amazing. If these walls could talk, well, they would probably sing if they could, I imagine. <laughs> that is really <laughs> incredible. Yeah, we'll put that on t-shirts yeah, later on. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. You have really put some serious love um, and effort and elbow grease into really restoring this place. Tell us about that process. There have been four owners between Leon and myself. Uh, when I bought it, it had been, um, you know, a little bit, little bit run down. I bought it sight unseen. Um, I'm first and foremost, I'm a huge Leon Russell fan. I've been collecting uh, Tulsa Sound music memorabilia since I was a kid, you know, primarily centered around Leon Russell. Quickly, it took a life of its own and I knew it had to come back as a recording studio. So our first goal was to get it listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Wow. We are in a small cohort of historic recording studios in America. You know, there's Motown and Capitol and RCA, and of course now we have the church studio, church studio. right here in Tulsa. We are opened back up um, as a recording studio, but we are also a tourist attraction. Artists can be recording while the public come in, they can see our archive, they can um, often peek in uh, during a session as well to see what a real working recording studio looks like. When you see this incredible archive room, what are some of the things we'll find in there? Well, we have clothes that belong to Leon, several of his canes, uh, he used canes later in his life. We have an original self-portrait that Leon uh, drew of himself. We have tapes and music, handwritten song lyrics. Wow, that is so cool. You know, and you've done such a beautiful job visually representing the, the specialness of this place. But I feel like it is one of those places you could even walk through the door with your eyes closed and feel that you are somewhere special. That seems to speak to the, the history in this spot. Is that what you hoped to accomplish? I kind of take a hybrid approach. When the church was built after the turn of the century, it was the people's church. It was built by the people, for the people, and everyone was welcome. Well, when Leon had the studio, you kind of had to know someone to get in the doors. <laughs> and so we have some exclusive elements of the church studio, but then of course we're open to the general public, whether you're a tourist or a music fan, or we get a lot of church history historians, I just want to know the history of the church. When visitors do come, because after they see this, and after I go home, and after I rave about Church Studio to every single human being I know, they will come. What is it that you hope that they will take away? And um, there's something really for everyone that makes you think about, how can I be better today than I was yesterday, and what does the future hold for me? Wow. Teresa, you've taken us to church today in <laughs> more ways than one. It's a revival. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you for having us here today. This yeah, has been you're welcome. I've loved it. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Travis Kidd from right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we're going to be recording right here at the church studio in the next few weeks, something we've been really excited about for quite some time. Uh, and as our opportunity to come in here and enjoy this uh, historic studio, you know, we've all driven past this place for so many years, uh, going to and from gigs. It's always been such a landmark that um, we've never had an opportunity to actually come in and grab it. and and to do something here. So uh, it's it's history, it's Tulsa history, and, and now I get to be a part of it. I had been trying to record here and trying to put some funding together uh, since Teresa had reopened the studio uh, a few months ago. I had applied for a grant through Play Tulsa Music, uh, which is a uh, local uh, organization here promoting uh, Tulsa music and arts. I sent them a request and uh, helped fund uh, three days of recording here at the church studio. This Neve console that they're using in here um, has a lot of history. The drums here belonging to Tulsa local uh, legend Jamie Oldecker. There's a piano from uh, Dan Fogelberg. Uh, it's just amazing. There's all kinds of toys around here that we're excited about. And so the history from it from back then all the way to now is just amazing and we're really glad to be a part of it. Coming up on Road Trippin', dessert first? Why not? In Tulsa, there are tons of dining destinations to explore. Plus, wait until you see our Route 66 Airbnb. That's coming up. One of the most exciting new projects here in Tulsa is the Market District. It's a long-term plan to revitalize the entire area around Route 66 with new local businesses like restaurants and retail. The city's even set up a visitor center here at Gamble's, which is a local coffee shop where you can grab a free cup of joe and plan your trip. 
And while you're here, you've got to stop at Mother Road Market. It's a huge food hall and kickstart kitchen that helps locals in the food industry turn their restaurant dreams into reality. And they have everything here from hot chicken to ramen. And it just so happens, I'm hungry. Let's check it out. On the surface, Mother Road Market is a really fun food hall with more than 20 delicious dining options, as if that's not good enough. But this culinary community space is more than meets the eye. It is the only non-profit food hall in the state of Oklahoma. The restaurants are concepts, and Mother Road Market is the ultimate incubator. Here, local entrepreneurs are given a chance to test and scale their small businesses in a creative, supportive environment. Kitchen 66, housed inside the Mother Road Market, is Tulsa's Kickstart Kitchen, offering commercial kitchen space to local food entrepreneurs, plus business training programs, sales support, and pop-up opportunities to test their food concepts. So, who's hungry? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm hungry, so I'm in the right place, yes, right? You are. Excellent. The perfect place. Yes. <laughs> I think I am going to have the Cali Girl fries. Awesome. Yes, that's our best seller. Excellent choice then. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. All right, Trevor. And Perfect. We'll call your name out the Perfect, thank, thank you. you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, You're very Faith. Welcome. Awesome. Enjoy. I sure will. Thank you. Have a great day. you too. Well, of course, Faith's Curds and Whey are known for their delicious fried cheese curds, but these are the Cali Girl fries. There's avocado, grilled chicken, a delicious sauce, all loaded onto fries, and it's one of their most popular dishes. I think you definitely have to order these. Should I go for it? Oh my gosh, it's good. Trevor. That is me. Justin, thank you so no much. Problem, awesome, looks good. That's Justin, and actually he owns 1907 Barbecue, which is one of the most popular spots here at Mother Road Market. They actually started out as a food trailer and grew a huge loyal following, and now have a permanent place right here at Mother Road Market, and I think you can see why. And for those of you with a sweet tooth, this guy right here, don't worry, Mother Road Market has you covered here at the Big Dipper. They have fresh made waffle cones, which we smelled the moment we walked in the door, and delicious artisanal ice cream. This is the Honeycomb Lavender. Oh, and did we mention that the Mother Road Market is also home to the best patio in Tulsa? You can enjoy a meal, murals, and live music in this huge space. And you can even hit the little links for nine holes of Route 66 themed mini golf. So if you're looking for a true one stop to dine and shop, the Mother Road is calling. And if you're still in the mood to explore Tulsa food, your options are bountiful. In fact, Tulsa is home to several James Beard nominated spots. For fine dining in Tulsa's chic Utica Square, Polo Grill has been a tradition for nearly 40 years. Cocktail enthusiasts head to Valkyrie. Located in the colorful, vibrant arts district, they are proud of playfully serving serious drinks. For a taste of the Caribbean in Tulsa, Cicero's is your spot. For progressive American cuisine, check out Orin, a fruit and veggie forward spot in beautiful Brookside. Restaurant Basque offers atmosphere and a menu of small plates with big flavor, all inspired by locally sourced ingredients. If you're looking for a great breakfast or lunch, Evelyn's Soul Food Restaurant is serving up a taste of home with southern style comfort food. And for authentic Indonesian dishes and scratch-made desserts, Tulsans know that Rindang & Company Indonesian Bistro is the place to go. Buck's Cosmic Curios on Route 66 is an iconic Tulsa stop. It's hard to miss Buck himself. They've got a great gift shop with Route 66 souvenirs, homemade ice cream, and now your next place to stay. Wait until you see Buck's Cosmic Crash Pad, a delightfully quirky Airbnb right next door and right on Route 66. Buck Adams owner Mary Beth Babcock has already created an out of this world experience on Route 66 with her unique shop. This small colorful space is full of cute and quirky gifts, handmade goods from local makers, and the perfect Route 66 souvenirs. Now she's adding this blast from the past pad for your vacation stay. 
Buck Adams Cosmic Crash Pad is three bedrooms, one and a half baths of pure nostalgia. The moment you walk in the door, you're in a space cowboy dream. Take in roadside attraction or neon sign views from each of these beautiful, thoughtfully decorated bedrooms. You can whip up a leave it to beaver breakfast in the kitchen or relax in the lively living room for a bit of classic TV. Mary Beth calls Buck Adams Crash Pad a living gallery, and it's easy to see why. Every corner of this quirky Airbnb is loaded with retro fun, and that includes all of this great art on the walls. And guess what? It's all for sale. So if you like it, you can buy it and take home a piece of your Route 66 experience. And this Airbnb is perfectly located, close to several local attractions, museums, dining, and shopping. So if you're looking for a special stay during your Tulsa trip, blast off to Buck Adams Cosmic Crash Pad. Another overnight experience totally unique to Tulsa is this house right here behind me. This is the Outsiders House Museum. Of course, it's the film location from the cult classic. And right across the street is the Greasers Hideout, an opportunity for visitors to stay the night and stay gold. We met House of Pain's Danny Boy O'Connor on our last trip to Tulsa when he showed us around the Outsiders House Museum. It's a shrine he created to his favorite film, The Outsiders. Now, he set up the perfect hideout for fans of the film to stay. Step inside this Airbnb and step back in time when, after a rumble, the greasers escape from the fuzz in their hip hideout. With two spacious bedrooms, a cute kitchen, and a porch to kick back on, you can expect an authentic experience when you stay in this film set come to life. Inside the Greasers hideout is a living gallery. It's full of memorabilia from both the Outsiders film and the original S.E. Hinton novel that inspired it. A line from S.E. Hinton's novel which inspired the Outsiders film reads, Nothing sparkly can stay. But we're pretty sure this is a special Tulsa experience you'll remember for a long time to come. For a different experience, be sure to check out these Tulsa hotel options from luxury, location, and lots of amenities. On the National Register of Historic Places, the Ambassador Tulsa is in the Marriott Autograph Collection. This chic boutique hotel is an elegant reminder of Tulsa's oil boom era. The Holiday Inn Express and Suites downtown is located in the vibrant Tulsa Arts District. The hotel is located just steps away from some of the best restaurants in town, Tulsa's One Oak Field, home to the Drillers professional baseball team, museums, and so much more. And deep in Tulsa's incredibly beautiful downtown Art Deco district, you'll find the Courtyard by Marriott, located in the historic Atlas Life Building. Here's a pro tip, ask for a room on the seventh floor to see original building details from 1922. Coming up on Road Trippin', they're on a mission to help talented professionals call Oklahoma home. How Tulsa Remote is investing in the future, coming up. Tulsa is working hard to create tomorrow. They're investing in today's talent to help set the city up for future success. And they're doing that in part through a really cool program called Tulsa Remote. I'm here with Dominique Clark, who's the Director of Member and Alumni Experience for Tulsa Remote. Thanks for having us. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I appreciate that. You know, in the whole show, we have really talked about uh, how Tulsa is such a great place to visit, um, and it's a wonderful place to come spend some time with your family. But we're talking about how Tulsa can really be a great place to put down roots, and Tulsa Remote's helping people do that. Can you explain to us a little bit about how? Tulsa Remote is a very creative solution to um, the brain drain that was happening in Tulsa in 2018. Um, and so it's a remote worker program um, that creates a great opportunity for people to come to Tulsa from all over the world and really get to experience Tulsa, bringing diverse talent, their backgrounds, experiences, new perspectives um, to a city that's growing and, and thriving. So exactly how does the program work and who exactly are you trying to attract to Tulsa? The way that the program works is if you have a full-time remote position, you're able to apply for this program and live outside of the state, obviously. Um, but if you um, are accepted into this program, what happens is you're incentivized with 
$10,000 to move to the Tulsa for a minimum of a year. Obviously, we hope that people stay longer and want yeah. them to become long-term residents. And we provide them with a membership to our partner space, 36 Degrees North, where it's an incubator. They can come and work out of here whenever they choose. They can engage with other entrepreneurs and, and startup businesses locally for them to really integrate into the community and really find their place here in Tulsa. Having that local person, that uh, that Tulsan, that person who's familiar with the local scene and the culture here to help them along that journey, I think it's got to be so helpful for, for people. Have you had feedback in that regard from members and alumni? We talk to people at the end of their year and really try to learn about like how was your journey um, and learn about their overall experience and a lot of people will tell us that you know if it wasn't for a program like Tulsa Remote they may not have been willing to take that risk and what really helped them was that they we have this built-in community that they were able to move to Tulsa with other people who were also making that leap. So how many people and professionals have you attracted using the Tulsa Remote program? At this point, um, we're a little bit over 1,600 people who have moved to Tulsa, all different walks of life, different ages, different um, experiences, and it's been great to kind of see them um, come and thrive here in Tulsa. It sounds like I'm not the only Austinite that's a fan. Austin is actually one of the biggest places that we've been able to recruit people from. Um, a lot of, we have over 64 people who have relocated from Austin, um, and Austin is actually one of the top cities um, right behind them is Los Angeles. Tulsa makes a pretty hard sell. It's a great town and I imagine that people really are enticed to stay. Do people often stay beyond that initial year from Tulsa Remote? Yeah, a uh, majority of people will stay in Tulsa. A lot of people we talk to at their 12 months, they're like, I'm just getting started, you know, and so they want to stay here for long term. They're still trying to figure out what other opportunities are here that I can um, continue to grow in. You know, if they've started businesses, they want to see those things come to fruition and continue to grow in Tulsa. And so a lot of people have chosen to stay in Tulsa if they've bought a home, they've invested in the community. Hi, my name is Abu Mukabam and I am an alumni of the first group of Tulsa Motors to move here to Tulsa. Me and my wife came here in 2019, moved here from California where at the time we were really struggling to find a good balance of, you know, um, the cost of living and our experience in this living life. So we decided to really research Tulsa and see this opportunity for remote workers to come out there. So what we didn't know was we were about to dive into a place where the community was great, where there's uh, a lot of opportunities for you know, entrepreneurs as well as people like myself who love community service, who love to engage in the community. So Tulsa Remote did a very great job of connecting us with the resources and the people and then we took it from there. My wife, you know, as a um, chef here in Tulsa, she was able to develop her skills and now have her own restaurant here at Mother Road Market. So, you know, opportunities have been abundant in abundance for us. You know, I work a lot in the community with uh, nonprofits, um, working with kids, professional career and aspirations are going well, as well as my nonprofit leadership and just service the community. So I couldn't be happier to be here in Tulsa. Wow, I mean, it sounds to me like Tulsa Remote work looking long term. How do you feel like Tulsa Remote is really making an impact now in the future of Tulsa? You know, a lot of our remote workers, they come in with their full time remote jobs, but a lot of them also have passions and desires and may have businesses that they also are growing on the side. And so, um, and a lot of those may be in their creative spaces. So a lot of our members have not only just come with their jobs, but have also thought about what does it look like to be in a, a creative space that is growing and thriving. And they feel very comfortable and excited doing that here in Tulsa. When people come here, they feel that energy, they feel that excitement, and they want to be a part of it. This is so very cool. Dominique, thank you for telling us a little bit more about it. I think I might be ready to sign up. I might have a, you know, a, <laughs> yes, a road, road trip in Tulsa remote <laughs> option here. I love it. Dominique, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being able to talk to you today about Tulsa remote. We love it. We're fans. <laughs> How cool is that? If the Tulsa Remote Program sounds like something you'd be interested in, they're taking applications on a rolling basis, so there's always an opportunity to apply. Stick around, there's more road tripping from Tulsa coming up. Well, Tulsa, you've done it again. You really know how to make a visitor feel right at home. We've been so inspired learning about the ways the city of Tulsa celebrates and supports the entire creative community here and how that benefits everyone. You can learn more about us and the show at RoadTrippinTV.com and be sure to follow us on social media for lots of extras. Well, that's officially a wrap from Tulsa, but we're already excited about planning our next trip. Until then, I'm Trevor Scott. Keep road tripping.